that's basically my experience, my personal experience. Well, what what did what did ANS? So you wrote ANS Rewired, and so what what did that bring that was new? I mean, you you looked at all this stuff, and you felt compelled. You know, that was out there. You felt compelled to write a book because you had something. I think you had yeah. something different to offer. What what did what, and when when what. When was it published? It was published. So, so it was actually uh, CFS Unraveled was the book. So CFS Unraveled okay. was published 2013. Right. Yeah. Right. And well, I don't know what it brought new because I didn't really go around looking at all the books that everyone had written. Mm. I mean, I had looked at lots of stuff, and it was all about treating symptoms. I just gave what I put out there. I mean, I assumed that no one had come up with this because. Otherwise, surely my doctor would have told me, right? Mm -hmm. And and so I wrote this hypothesis uh, and framework for recovery. And actually afterwards, I discovered there were other people who'd said that the autonomic nervous system is central um, going back decades. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't come up maybe with anything new. I don't know. Um, maybe this I was just reinventing the wheel, um, even in the 70s. There were doctors who were talking about this, and and then there was when when I republished uh, the the second edition of the book. I was actually contacted by some researchers, who basically say, "Well, yes, we know that this is this is what is the driving mechanism of fibromyalgia is is autonomic dysfunction, right?" And you know they they had been giving like a lecture about their research, you know, award-winning researchers and, and someone in the audience goes, oh, you're saying exactly what Dan Neufer is saying. And they were like, who the heck is Dan Neufer? <laughs> so, so, so then I sort of got validated years later, sure. right? And uh, I'm sure you've published countless articles now on, on autonomic dysfunction. And obviously for POTS, everyone in the world agrees that it is dysautonomia. Well, yes. What people don't agree is when it comes to CFS and f I think fibromyalgia, it's starting to, you know, the research community, there's so much evidence, which I didn't know about back then, obviously. Um, and I still, I don't follow all the research. I, I, I'm focused on helping people recover. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that's not valid, but I'm just, I'm not an academic. Okay. You know? Right, right. It's not what you I do. Um, but... But from what I hear from academics is that there's an overwhelming amount of research, really, that fibromyalgia, that autonomic dysfunction is, is at the root of this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and I think I, I I don't believe, I mean, I'm sure you've seen and published many, many articles on dysautonomia in CFS, but I don't get the sense that there is any kind of consensus that that's the root driving mechanism. Yeah. Um, Will that change? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. The, the problem with research is everyone who researches has uh, some research interest. And they're a specialist at X, Y, and Z. And so that's what they look at. And they look at that aspect of the illness. And they can find dysfunctions. And you can do that for just about anything. Because remember what I said earlier? Just about everything is wrong. <laughs> so, but not many people come at it from the point of view of like a patient would. Where you say... Hey, I just want to get well. Mm -hmm. Like, what is driving all of this? So I didn't come in with as a metabolic expert, right? And see, someone who's an expert on on on, on metabolism isn't going to come up with this autonomia. <laughs> right, right, right. But but the fact that you know that looking at it from an autonomic nervous system standpoint and implementing practices to support the autonomic nervous system that at least at times leads to recovery is pretty good. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good evidence right there. I mean, drugs, well, there's lots of evidence one way like you that. test hypothesis yeah. is you develop a treatment for it. Yeah. And if the treatment works, yes. then the hypothesis is, is validated. Um, yeah. But so here comes a big problem now. Uh huh. Right. There's a big problem here. And, and so what you're saying is, so there's a couple of issues, right? And I, I, first of all, the issue is, what is our model of the world? And what is our model of health? 
and I would suggest that it is distorted from what is really how the world works in most most people's case. So healthy people talk about things like this. Well, there are diseases and then there are cures. And if there's not a disease, well, then we need a cure. And then we have a cure and then the disease is gone. What, what are they talking about? W what cures? What, the cure for Parkinson's? Oh no, the cure for Alzheimer's? Oh, I see. The, the cure for heart disease? The cure for stroke? The cure for... We don't have cures. Right, right. Where in the world are there cures? I don't know of any cure. Maybe if you have a bacterial infection, yeah, but, you might have a cure. If you have, Antibiotic. If you have a cancer that you can remove or something physical, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Broken bone. A surgery, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But even yeah. that, I mean, yeah. I had appendicitis. Right. Am I cured? I tell you, I was a lot healthier before I had the appendicitis than after I had the surgery, right? I'm all messed up now, right? So one thing you see, I'm cured of appendicitis, but am I recovered? I'd say, no, I'm much worse off. Mm. <laughs> what about people with cancer? Oh yeah, we cured the cancer. We cut it out, we gave you radiotherapy and th three lots of chemo, you're cancer free. And it's like, they're so sick, they can't even get out of the wheelchair. That's true for some people. That's true for some people. They're cured, but are they recovered? Well, maybe not until six or 12 months mm. later. So recovering your health and being cured are two different things, right? And are you cured? What if the cancer comes back? Are you cured if it's not there for two years? Are you cured if it's not there for three, five, ten? Right? They have different definitions, but is that a cure? I mean, even even infections, right? And this is there's a lack of logical thinking. I give you an example, and we all experience this where we go to the doctor or, or an alternative healthcare practitioner. And you've got these problems, and then they give you something for those problems. That is madness, court. No one does this. Not, no plumber does this. If I go, come home, and there's water all over my house, the plumber doesn't go, well, let's get some towels, get some fans going, and you're going to be A-OK. -okay. <laughs> let's mop this stuff up. Now, every plumber would go, well, hang on a sec. I think you've got a, maybe a broken pipe or something. Let's find where the water's coming from and fix that, right? But you take your kid with chronic ear infections to the doctor and they go, oh, terrible ear infection. Here are the antibiotics. That would suggest that the bacteria is causing the ear infection. Mm. But hang on a sec. If that was the case, then the antibiotics would just make the ear infections go away. But they don't, right? The infection goes away and four weeks later, the kid's back with another ear infection. And... If it was bacteria, well, why aren't other people getting these bacterial infections? Like, it's a bacteria. It doesn't. It's simplistic to say a bacteria causes an infection. It's just like it's simplistic to say that a virus causes a viral illness. The ten people in a room, one person gets a cold, three people get the cold, the other seven don't. Why? Well, what, what, they were what, all exposed what, to the virus. What is the alternative uh, to this? Well, the alternative is a deeper understanding of how things work and a more logical approach. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the example with the chronic ear infections. So why do people get chronic ear infections? Well, that's because their ears are in an environment where bacteria can grow. So the bacteria is not the problem. Just like the fact that it's raining is not a problem in the house, making the carpet stinky and the walls moldy. The problem is that the roof is broken. Yes. yes? So in the, in, in the ear infections, the problem is that you've got wet ears, right? You've probably got allergies, yeah, which leads to this issue in the ears, right? And, and so with CFS, what I'm saying is we need to stop thinking about looking for a cure because we're talking about a dysfunction. It's not broken. It feels broken, but it can't be broken. Think about it. Most people who are listening would have had a time where they didn't feel as sick as they do now. And they would have had a time, maybe, where they felt worse in the past. How can you feel worse and now you feel better? You didn't cure it. What's going on? It's a dysfunction. So rather than thinking that there's this problem, we cure it, and one thing will fix everyone, we've got to say, 
let's have a model where we go towards recovery. Now, everyone can recover. So many people have done recover. You've recovered, right? You've had some recovery. At one stage in your life, in the past, you were worse. And then you were better. What happened? What cures did you have, right? None. So the question is, well, how can I get fully recovered? And then people start talking about things like, what do they mean by recovered? Okay. So I hear people that tell me, oh, yeah, I did this. And I took these hormones and these supplements, this and that. And now I'm like 80, 90% functioning and I'm like kind of recovered. I'm like, well, let's go for a three hour bike ride and see how recovered you are after that. <laughs> so there's one thing saying, look at how many symptoms you have. And then the other thing is, is the underlying disease process that causes all these dysfunctions and symptoms still there? Right. Yes. And that can obviously vary over time as well. Remember, I had a period, and many people do, where I was kind of pretty good during my illness, right? So we need to focus not on treating symptoms, but the root cause. And we need to not think of it as this one magic cure because because it is a central nervous system dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Central. Think about it. If we look at all the people with this illness, it's all different. I got ill doing this. I got ill doing that. I get triggered by that. I get triggered by smells. I get triggered by exercise. Some people with fibromyalgia feel better when they exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completely different than CFS. No wonder we think it's a different illness. So we cannot lump everyone together and think that there's this singular solution that's just going to be a cure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because sure. that's that's happen. obvious yeah 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 it is yeah. obvious is it yeah. not well look all the it is obvious i agree look at all the different things some people pacing did it some people diet did it some people mind body did it some people a drug you know a drug worked yes, and it, yes. it is very puzzling it's Absolutely. very puzzling yes Yes, but if we look at it from the standpoint of autonomic dysfunction, all of that makes all sense. That makes... And it's not a mystery. Okay. okay. Right? It's not a mystery. Because in order to retrain the nervous system, we first of all need to change the environment of the nervous system. The nervous system is under an onslaught that is just crazy. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, what is it like to be a person with this illness? So are you, are you talking we, about the, the autonomic nervous system and the central nervous system, the, just the nervous system in general? Well, I mean, it's all connected. You know, like uh, we, we probably shouldn't be making these distinctions too strongly. And look, that's something that even I, I'm quite guilty of. When I've spoken to some researchers, they're like, well, you know, these things aren't so distinct because everything in the nervous system, it's all wired together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So I, I talk about the autonomic nervous system. Uh, it's probably a simplification of, of what's going on right. in this brain dysfunction, okay. right? And pain researchers who do a lot of these scans and things, they, they, will, they will attest to that very easily, right? But I guess I talk about the autonomic nervous system as being central because this is the chief driving mechanism that leads to all of these dysfunctions. And so what I'm saying is if we can recognize that we are triggered by many different things, I mean, think about it, forget other people, forget research. Anyone's listening with this illness, look at your own life. Mm -hmm. What makes you worse? How about exercise? Mm -hmm. Does it make yeah. you worse? What about... What about um, oh. when you don't sleep, yeah. right? What about being around people or noisy environments? Mm -hmm. What about lights and sounds, uh, stimulation? What about smells? Mental. Uh, what about foods? Right. Yeah. What about mental stuff, <laughs> right? Let's say you have an emotional upset, oh, yeah. right? Or just, or just mental and, and, cognitive and work. Cognitive work. Or I mean, it's cognitive based work. How cognitive tense work. my body gets sometimes. When I'm doing cognitive work, yes. on the other hand, it's also, it can be relaxing at times too. So, yes, yes. It's all about the measure. And in fact, in my experience court, I would suggest to you that mental work is much more of an issue than physical mm. exercise. Mm -hmm. 
But most of us don't make that association. And most of us don't know what mental strain is because some things can appear to be relaxing, but actually we're very mentally straining. No. Yes. Whether there might be games, mm -hmm. it might be knitting, mm. it might be um, video games, it might be watching TV. We think these things are relaxing, but actually neurologically, they can actually be very stressing. Maybe. Yes. Sure. And, and and emotional stress too. I mean, many of us get to a point where it's like, I can't afford to have this argument right now because I'm going to pay for it tomorrow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. So people think of stress as being a mental thing. It's 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 multifaceted. Uh, and what's going on in your gut, and what's going on metabolically, and what's going on with your heart. I mean, you stand up and you feel like you're going to pass out. You know, this is stress. Sure. All of these things are sure. stress. And so if the nervous system is responding inappropriately to stressors or stimulus, let's call it, yes, then, and you have all this stimulus all the time in your body from all the dysfunctions, uh, then it's going to keep triggering right. and it's going to keep creating dysfunctions. And so what happens is when people start to remove these triggers or reduce these triggers, then we come to a point where it becomes perhaps more manageable, let's say, for the brain to cope mm -hmm. with. And now you start to get into the realm of being able to perhaps retrain the brain because you now have got a singular thing going on. I give the analogy in the program that if I'm trying to teach you how to catch a ball, that's not the exact analogy I give in the given program, but here's one. If I try and teach you how to catch a ball, and then I get 50 uh, international soccer players standing 20 meters away from you, pelting the ball at you at full power towards your face, you might struggle to catch a ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're probably doing something like this. Right, right, right? Right. But if I get them all to stop and I get one person in front of you and say, or right, I get ready to catch the ball and I just kick it slowly towards you, you can learn. You can teach your brain how to do this. Yes. And it's a bit like that with autonomic nervous system retraining. If I reduce all the stresses and the stimulus to the brain, and then we try and have a focused effort to retrain it, then we're able to do that. And there are countless ways of doing it. And, and many people you know, do this in different ways, and sometimes they don't even know they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my hope was always that people could see this from the recovery interviews because, but I, I think sometimes without enough education, it's difficult for these things to become obvious. Right. Right. So the, the goal is to, the goal is to stop the nervous system from reacting. So, so much to stimuli, all sorts of different stimuli. Uh, and as does fit with, Overreacting, over say. I mean, over or, or underreacting. We wanted to react appropriate. Right. right. You now that that fits. You know, I mean, that fits with a, a lot of research. You know, I mean, Jared Younger believes mm. the microglial cells in the brain are, you know, just responding to all sorts of stimuli. The slightest stimuli, they're just going off. Poof. You know, pro-inflammatory cytokines mm. sending alarm signals. Blah 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 blah. Um, yeah. And we feel this, and, don't we, Cole? Well, do. I mean, we, we feel really do. this. <laughs> uh, Anything comes on and it's like, God, we can feel it in our body. We can feel the flare up coming on. Yes. Right? You had a barbecue, you, you had a, a birthday, and you're like, oh, it's really time for me to get out of here. Nothing is even going on. There's just people talking, and you're like, ah, I gotta right, go. Right. right? Yes. But you see, the, th the thing is, these stimulus are inherent in the body. They're not external. They're not mental. Well, they can be mental and mm -hmm. external, but they're also in the body. When, when you go to bed, you don't eat anymore. Mm -hmm. And you lie in your bed somewhere between 6 and 12 hours without food. I mean, that's the stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your body has to respond. That's normal. Your body responds with a variety of hormonal responses. You know, the diurnal rhythm that normal people have, but people with CFS seem to have long forgotten. And 
and it responds to a change in blood sugar. But what happens with us? How does it respond? It doesn't respond normally. Doesn't respond normally. Yeah. The, what about in your gut? Yes. Right? I mean, IBS. I would say IBS. I would just stop calling it IBS. I would just call it fibromyalgia of the intestines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a nervous system well, dysfunction. And we get confused because you look at IBS and say, well, hey, if it's a nervous system dysfunction, why do I have candida? And why do I have parasites? And why do I respond to a low FODMAP diet? And why blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, yes, because when you're ill, everything gets messed up. But, you know, I mean, yeah, the house with the stinky carpet responds to getting new carpets in, but I still got to fix the hole in the roof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, there's certainly, I mean, fibromyalgia research, you know, it shows all these, you know, these, these pain processing centers are all messed up, you know, from the, from outside the spine to inside to wind up to, you know, overreactivity to uh, the the pain inhibitory circuits are not functioning uh, correctly either. So there's this kind of, you know, hyperactive state. I mean, this seems to be present all over the place. Um, hmm. So, so you've been dealing with recovery for 10 years. Uh, I mean, is this, well, first let me, how many people, and you've interviewed people, how many people have you interviewed that have recovered? And how many people do you just, I guess, just know of? Because there are lots of recovery stories on, on the uh, internet. Uh, I mean, it is, it is a more common thing now. I mean, you're, I mean, MECFS seem to be kind of, not a death sentence, but a chronic illness sentence. Um, 10 or so years ago. And when I first learned about MECFS, I mean, I rejected this because it just seems so bleak, but that was in the nineties. But I, yeah. I mean, things that really haven't changed that much, but, but now there is maybe a social media. I don't know. Maybe people are trying more things, but there certainly are more recovery stories around. Uh, there are more recovery stories, but are there more recovery? That's, well, well, you know, it's difficult because, from a scientific point of view, there's no evidence to make any kind of determination. That's the first thing I would say. Right, right, right. Um, it's possible. Certainly, there are many. Well, well people... like this ANSBY, there's many other programs, and so people are more directed now, and perhaps there are more people getting better outcomes. Obviously, that makes sense. They're, they're a... trying new things. You know, new things are popping yeah, up. So you, you would you would hope that there would be. Over time, there's more and more opportunity. For people. I think yeah. so. It, it certainly would make sense, but I'm not sure about the assertion that people weren't recovering before. Oh, sure, 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 sure. And and I guess one of the weird things that I found is not only had I not ever met anyone who had this illness during all my years of illness, but obviously forget about people who'd recovered. I mean, that's like ridiculous, right? If you don't even meet anyone who's got the illness, how are you going to meet someone right. who's recovered? Right. But you see, it has to do with our filtering, isn't it? I mean, once I accepted the diagnosis and I started to recover, I started to meet people like all over the place. Yeah, I remember I went from not knowing anyone who had my illness for like six years to suddenly meeting three in one month. You know, I'm like, what? These people are everywhere. And it's the same with recovered mm -hmm. people, right? And I can spot them a mile away. Yeah, I've had people flinch when I've asked them, oh, have you like recovered from chronic fatigue syndrome or have you had chronic illness? And they're like, what? what? <laughs> like, you can see him. Uh, the person who lived across the road from me, right? Huh? Um, my, my, my daughter's um, uh, um, um, uh, um, friend's parent. Uh, these people are everywhere. And, and one of the issues is a lot of the people never even get diagnosed with CFS. Ah, ah, yeah, sure. They have some mystery illness and and doctors often are reluctant to give a diagnosis because you Google CFS and then what do you get? Oh, it's an incurable illness. You probably have it forever. Virtually no one recovers. I mean, what doctor who has got any kind of empathy wants to lump that in your lap, right? And 
But I see people who recover there all over the show, right? And I've had many other people who've recovered in my program have told me the same thing, where suddenly they go places and they meet them all over the place. And I always make the joke to people and say, oh, you want to find someone who's recovered from CFS? Very easy. Why don't you just go and speak to your local naturopath Pilates, your yoga instructor. <laughs> and if you if you talk to like five to ten of them, you're going to meet some people who've recovered from CFS, right? Because you see people who recover, they often get very passionate about health. This is often how I spot them, you know, they eat nice diets, they exercise well, they talk about meditation and all this kind of stuff, you know? So I'm, I, I don't know that any of the figures are reliable. Yeah, and, and also... This whole notion of saying, like you talked earlier about the cure. Well, first of all, if it's a personalized approach, one single treatment doesn't apply. If I have one person who's got severe gut parasites, I have another person who actually has got complications with the CFS because they've got unmanaged type 1 diabetes. And I have another person who's got PTSD or another mental health condition. And I mean these people are all going to be triggered by these other problems for their CFS. How can I just talk about one treatment that's going to fix all of them? Well, yeah. Right. So they might have things in common, but we need a personalized approach. And if it doesn't work, that's the whole philosophy of ANS Rewire, is if it doesn't work, then the question is, isn't, isn't like, oh, that didn't work. What do I do now? No, no, no. If this is the right framework for recovery, if this makes sense to you, then you say, oh, it hasn't worked. I need to keep going with this and I need to do something else. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just make sure I answer your first the, the question previously because I don't want to sound like I dodged it. You asked me how many people have I spoken right. to that have recovered. The truth is I've stopped counting. Ah, okay. Right. I've stopped counting a long time uh. ago. And what I'd say is I have met um, in everyday life, just through my own interactions in the community, I've probably met a couple dozen like that. Through the interviews that I've done, and I'm amiss at not having published so many interviews, but it's around 60 that I've okay. interviewed who've recovered in separate ways. And in terms of people I've met through the program and that I've met through social media as well, like that I've just conversed with or interacted, uh, I've met hundreds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hundreds. And not all of them, I would say, were 100% recovered. Um, uh, somewhere like 80, 90% recovered, right? And what's the difference between 80, 90 and 100 percent? Well, sometimes it's incorrect judgment. <laughs> uh, because people like me, you know, they can't think of themselves as being well. So sometimes they are actually 100 percent. But sometimes it goes the other way where people think they're fully recovered and they're not really fully recovered at all. They're just symptom free. OK, right. And I draw the distinction is reco fully recovered to me means that you, not that you can't get sick again, because I believe everyone can get this illness. But fully recovered to me means that you are able to engage in stressors like, for instance, sleeplessness, um, not eating something perfectly today, uh, or exercise, Coming down with an infection. or emotional uh -huh. upset, whatever, or an infection, a cold or flu, uh, that you can deal with something like that and not have a flare-up. That, to me, is a full, Got it. right? And I would say that even with a partial recovery, it's the same thing. It means that you deal with those things better and you don't end up flaring right. up. Okay. Yeah. So that gives you an idea. And, and, and you know, my focus, or my preference has always been to learn about recoveries where people did it their own way because I find those the most fascinating and intriguing, right? And yeah, so that, that's been my experience. Great answer. Um, <laughs> that's a very yeah. helpful answer, really. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that you, yeah. With, with regard to people that you've met in your personal life, 
are these people that you found when you when you talk to them they had a period in which they were just you know not very functional and yet they were able to uh return to health at some point uh well, I mean, these were people who were often diagnosed with okay. illness. Um, uh, sometimes, sometimes they weren't diagnosed, um, but these were people who were very, very ill. And and the way I, uh, the way you will meet them is not by them telling you that that this is what uh-huh. happened. Like, I, I cannot think of a single one that I've uh, met that came up to me and said, "Oh, yeah, I had all this illness, blah blah blah," and then I did this and then I recovered. Like that's never happened to me, all right? And because people don't want to talk about this, like when they get well, they just want to pretend sometimes they want to pretend like that didn't even happen. That didn't exist because often they're kind of like they were so ill and somehow they got better and they're not even sure how. And they almost feel like, Uh, like they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to jinx it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? So, uh, you know, and if you ask them, oh, how did you get better? Ah, I had sort of this grave doctor. I did this, I did that. And, but they're not really sure. And so they feel very uh, uncomfortable, uh, they, a, a bit scared. Do you they, know what I they mean? Didn't have the, they didn't have the drug like, bing, this is going to do it for you. So they, they, didn't they, don't, have a cure. they don't have that certainty. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, they never had yeah. a cure. They, they somehow had this it's process good. of recovery yeah. and like, yeah, uh, they can't kind of believe that it worked. They don't even know how it worked. And and the re- the way I've always found them is just seeing how they talk, seeing how they engage with life. Uh, they, they, it's like you know, it's like they say, like and and you know, maybe an alcoholic can spot another alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a person recovering from chronic fatigue syndrome can spot another person with recovering from chronic fatigue syndrome, right? That there is a set of some cute focuses and behaviors that that kind of makes me often go oh did you blah 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 yeah interesting that that's typically mm-hmm. what's happened uh, occasionally i have found once people learn what i do that they come and tell me yes but you but so you but it, it seems to me that you so immersed yourself in the world of recovery really that you can spot you can now spot people who uh a, a, yeah. a lot of the time, a lot of the time, probably not all the time. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't know, would I? <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. If there's people I haven't spotted, I wouldn't know about that. So again, this is difficult to have any definitive oh, yeah. truth. But certainly, but I, you know, I could... my experience isn't yeah, unique. Yeah, yeah. So I've spoken to many people who've recovered and people in the program who then tell me, like, I spoke to a lady the other day and she's like, Oh, I'm finally feeling better, and I'm like 70% well now. And I went on a holiday for the first time in years. And we went, and she goes, we went to the uh, hotel, and at the front desk, she must have started a conversation about this because she's all excited about being a little bit better. And the person at the hotel desk said she was sick with this illness herself <laughs> for years, and she's fully well now for many, many years. Right. Right. And she's like, wow, I can't believe it. I met someone who recovered, you know? And I'm like, yeah, well, you know. But I had no chance in my years of illness because I didn't even meet someone who had the illness because, you know, I didn't ever talk about it. Like, it was like a stigma. I've got some weird thing. I don't know what it is. And and when you talk to people and if you see vest come, they, they act like it's a mental illness. So you got all this stigma with it, you know, like you're hypochondriac and it's not real. And you feel like a hypochondriac because... You know, there's so many things. I mean, it's it's embarrassing. I, I I was embarrassed to go tell the doctor often what was going on because it just sounds so weird, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? I got this, I got that, I got this. You, you feel like a hypochondriac. So I don't think any figures are reliable. And I don't think the figures on how many people get this illness are reliable either. Well, there really aren't, you know, there really aren't. There's nothing much reliable about figures. <laughs> that Nobody's really looking at recovery. Um so yeah 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 and and of course m- most people aren't even diagnosed uh and hopefully exactly. long COVID is gonna exactly help with that uh but we'll see first let me ask you do you see so you know people who've recovered using your program you know people who's recovered who haven't used your program do you know people who've recovered who's used other programs do you see any broad yes all of in them. this in the recovery process is there 
Yeah, you know. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because we see a lot of different, a lot of different things. People doing a lot mm-hmm. of different things. But are, are there are 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 you know? We were talking about are there certain subsets of MECF that's that respond to different treatments better. Uh, but anyway, with regards to mm-hmm. just recovery, do you see any broad themes? Or are these are these um, kind? I know you see them um, interacting with the autonomic nervous system. So people, some people are recovering who are not, they're not focusing on the autonomic nervous system. They just happen to be doing something that affects it. Um, mm. But anyway, do you, do you see any do you see any broad things? Okay. Okay. So the first thing is, when I do recovery interviews, if you listen to, I encourage people to listen to many mm-hmm. of them. And I encourage you to listen, yes, with some positive notions to learn, but don't lose your skepticism. Like, just, I'm not against skepticism. I, I, I was very skeptical. I was jaded, right? <laughs> Try and be objective. You will hear people, they say, oh, I recovered, I did this and this, and then I recovered, and they attribute it to that thing that they did, the cure, sure. right? <laughs> this is why we hear about all these cures, you know, do this, do this diet, do juicing, do, I don't know, all kinds of yeah, weird yeah. stuff, right? But when you actually listen carefully, right, and certainly with the interviews that I do, uh, maybe not so much with some interviews. I've, I've, I've heard testimonies or things and people just tell you this one thing they did, right? But if you hear me interview, I, I like to dig. And when you dig, you go, oh, well, yes, well, I, for instance, they say, oh, I just did this mind-body program, right? I have recovered with this mind-body program. That's all I did. It was fantastic. I did it and bang. I go, okay, great. So um, what were you eating <laughs> every day? Had you changed your diet over a period of time? Oh, yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly all these diet changes. And go, ah, interesting. So um, did you change at all how you exercised or how you engaged with physical activity or how much work you were doing? Oh, yeah, there was all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Did you do any treatments? Well, you know, I did this. And then suddenly you find there's all this stuff. And apparently it was just the mind-body program. Or on the converse, let's go the other way. Some people will say uh, they did some treatments with an integrative doctor. I go, did you just do that? Yes, yes, I did this, and we took these treatments, and I'm cured from it. Okay, I go, well, how did you feel as you started to feel better? Okay, oh, it was great. I felt so much happier, so much relaxed. I didn't feel so stressed out. I go, okay. And so how did you relate to your pain? Well, I mean, it's pretty awful having that pain mm-hmm. all the time. And I go, well, you know, I wasn't worried so much about the pain because I felt I was going to get over this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Now we're starting to get into the psychological aspects of pain, right? And pain, was, this is well-known science, yes. okay? About how a certain psychological process of anticipation, uh, the meaning of a pain, <laughs> um, uh, the focus. You know, there's many aspects that influence pain, chronic yeah. pain conditions. Yes. Yeah? And you can see how they made the changes and how they related to their symptoms, mm-hmm. but they didn't do any mind body work. Right. <laughs> they didn't do any brain training, right? No, no. But they did not that they knew anyway, right? And did you? Uh, I also started to relax more. I, I'd go fishing just every day, just relaxing and just sit there. I took a bit of time off. I stopped working so hard. Oh, sounds like meditation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like. And this is the thing, people attribute something, but when you dig deep, you actually find they have a multilateral okay. approach. And that's why that's been my focus. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that is always the best way, but in my experience, I find many people who've done many good things and they're missing a few distinctions and they're missing doing it all together mm. with purpose. And what you need to do is, it's one thing healing the body, taking away the stressors, which many people do, we all do that. Everyone does that with this illness. They do that to manage the symptoms. But we need to also retrain the brain at the same time. And I believe the most obvious common theme in all the recoveries is that people don't 
have a cure, even if they say they do, that it was this thing or that thing, in truth, virtually all people will actually do a number of things together. Okay. And that is the secret to recovery, if there mm. is such a thing. And what, yeah, that's yeah, been my experience. Yeah, so what, what about people who are doing a lot? They're, they're doing a lot of stuff you know they're 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 trying like you, tr you they tried all these treatments and they're still they're not moving forward uh is there is there anything in particular that you see in these people that they're not doing that they could be doing or or yeah, i mean i mean there are people who are focusing on supplements and you know there's there but there's this mind body aspect and then there are people who are focusing on mind body access aspect but they're but they're you know there's also they could be helping their gut with something or helping, you know, or, or whatever. Well, Court, you know, that, that's a great question you have there. And, and I think those are not the rare people. It's not everyone. Don't we all try and do everything we can to recover and nothing, nothing works? Like this is common, right? We all try all of these things and don't seem to make any progress. So this isn't the rare thing that you're talking about. This yes. is like heaps of yes, people. Yes. Of course, the problem is that we all think it's we've tried it all and of course we haven't tried it all that's the first thing the second thing is that we 